Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and the bell notification. I read books this week, you know, to tell you all about them. I'm feeling very Jenna Marbles-y today. I'm sorry if that's that. And, um, yeah, I read books this week, and I wanted to tell you about them. It was a weird reading week for me. Very weird. So first off, I did a reread of Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This was picked by the popular vote in the TBR and Beyond group, and we're doing a group read of it, uh, or discussion on the 23rd, I think it is, of August. So I did a reread of it just to refresh my memory. I still love it. I'm still trash for this, the whole thing. And I'm loving how many people are, like, starting to read it now. They're like, oh my god, it is good. And I'm like, yeah, you get my pain now while we're waiting for the wall with the no, not the wall with the clock, the wall with the hand in it. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, solid five out of five stars. Boarding School Vermont, murder mystery, multiple timelines. It's fantastic. Then I picked up Night Tiger by Yangtze Cho. Uh, this was sent to me by my friend Meg, which was really sweet of her. Uh, it is set in colonial Malaysia, which is a time period I've never read anything in or really read nonfiction books about. So I actually really did enjoy that time period. It was kind of interesting to see how um, their culture had been kind of infused with a lot of colonial traditions um, and just social norms. That was really enjoyable. The, the mystery part of it was really, really cool too. There's a little bit of like elements of like paranormal because there is a bunch of murders going on and they look like wild animal attacks. But then there's this thing locally of like people maybe turning into tigers. It's interesting. And that part was really cool. But this was all honestly just ruined for me by the romance. But I know some of it was... Sometimes, like, things in books with historical fiction, you can be like, oh, well, like, it's, like, the history. But, like, they acknowledge in, in here the characters that, like, what they're doing isn't, like, socially acceptable. So I'm like, what? Um, what was, why? I, I'm also confused how something like this got to the Reese Witherspoon book pick thing or whatever her book club is called. And, like, it still has a pretty decent rating on Goodreads because, oh, my God, problematic. I'll get like a little spoilery here, okay? And then I'll put like a, I don't know, a timestamp for whenever I go to the next book is. But in, in the end, I gave it two out of five stars and I'm debating dropping it to one. So this is the spoilery part. So the romance is kind of incestuous. Now, the main characters aren't exactly connected by blood, but they're born on the same day. So they kind of, they keep being referring to themselves as twins and their parents marry after they are born. Um, but they are raised from like eight, nine years old, or maybe even younger to see each other as siblings. Okay. Then this whole romance thing develops. It's it's just creepy. It, it's very cringy to me. And even their parents are like, no, like this is a no, uh, no, no, this is not happening. Um, and then there's this whole thing after, like it's in the last three quarters of the book, which is really where the book started getting crappy for me. Um, and all of a sudden he pressures her nonstop, nonstop for sex. He makes some comment about how this other guy that was kind of courting her won't want her once she's got rid of her virginity. So he should just get rid of it for her. Um, she constantly literally has to physically push her him off of her for him to finally get that when she says no, it's a no. And that's the thing. None of this is challenged either. But then it literally immediately, like two lines later, when he gets upset and leaves the room, like storms off like a toddler, she literally in her monologues, oh no, what if he thinks I don't love him anymore? No, that is just emotional manipulation and abuse to like the highest degree. It's never dealt with. And that's their one true parent. That is their happily ever after is each other where he pressures her for sex. He ignores her like pushing off of no, I'm not into that. And then is guilted. Like I, I can't, it, it just like the whole, the book just self imploded for me at that point. It was so disgusting and uncomfortable to read and it's never dealt with. It's never acknowledged as problematic. It's, this is how she gets her happily ever after. And like having all this at the same time when she's like, oh, I want to go into like medicine and be a doctor or a nurse and like get an education. And oh my God, my stepfather is so horrible because he won't treat me like I'm a, like I'm a person. He treats me differently because I'm a girl. Like all of these modern day like concepts of feminism. And then it's like, oh, but my brother just tried to, let's be real, it's her brother, just tried to like emotionally manipulate me into losing my virginity. And then like, dangled virginity as my only virtue and for me it was just so cringy and so uncomfortable i cannot recommend this book at all if like that just i don't know how that went through publication i just 
it was so uncomfortable to read and I actually threw the book across the room when he literally used the term like the the, the the sentence of when she was like but you were with so many girls I didn't know that you liked me and he and I quote I was with them to try and get over you oh that's the equivalent of I'm not racist I'm gonna say something racist but I can't be racist because my best friend's cousin twice removed is black so like it Oh, it just, no, 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 no. Then I picked up The Candle in the Flame by Nafisa Azad. This is a debut work and it is a fantasy standalone with a lot of, I, I don't know like specific geographies. It's definitely like Middle Eastern inspired, but a lot of the characters, uh, from what I understood, there is a lot of Muslim culture and history and spirituality in this. Um, I'm honestly really impressed for this being a debut and a standalone. I don't feel like it fell into a lot of the pitfalls that a lot of those sorts of books fall into. Um, there wasn't like exaggerated or big mistakes or hiccups. I don't think it necessarily fell into a lot of like uh, like problematic -y tropes or anything like that. But that being said, the plot of this book I've definitely read it before. It, it's not really anything unique. But I think when I look at this as a standalone, and I think it was a pretty impressive standalone, again, even for a debut, especially for a debut, but even if it wasn't a debut, it's the cultural influences and representation and characters and the mythology kind of interwoven. And I think the big thing is like, there, it's not like a white girl in this community and all of the bad people ending up being brown or Muslim, which we've stereotyped an awful lot. So this was really cool. I loved the romance and it. it was so like, just, it was such a sweet romance. Um, and even and this is on top of that, my brain kept mentally checking out when I was reading this book, not because I wasn't interested in it. I was having a very weird week at work. Um, so I definitely want to reread this. I'm really happy I own it. It's a gorgeous cover. Uh, I loved the magic and this whole concept of uh, essentially like her body is like kind of like spirit sharing with someone else is kind of interesting. Um, but the romance, the romance was so sweet. It was probably my favorite part of this. And the cover makes so much like sense too. So I'm like, oh, it's a pretty cover and it's connected to the book. Yeah. I just really enjoyed this. And I think especially getting representation of, of, of Middle Eastern cultures being not, um, you know, what they are today in a lot of areas run by like alt-right terrorist organizations, right? There is moderate and centrist and extremes in all religions and cultures. And I think we've stereotyped a lot of Middle Eastern cultures to be the extreme, to be, um, you know, very controlling, uh, misogynistic, uh, violent. And that's not what this this book was. It really raised up the female, main female character and I loved it. I'm definitely going to reread it hopefully by the end of the year and I feel like I can get a much better review at that point because like then I picked up Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schreffer. This was Dexter meets the Savage Song and yeah that's pretty pretty apt <laughs> description. Our main character is essentially like an illegal mortician for her mother. Her mother like searches around all over the place for these like others and this like in our world but there's like these parent this paranormal element and they all have these powers and she helps like once her mother kills them like dissect them and they sell them on the black market i will be full frontal this is actually quite detailed and gruesome like it talks about like mutilation especially like within the first few chapters so if you have a weak stomach this may not be a book a book for you however Things evolve after the first few chapters. I don't want to spoil anything like that. Um, but we travel a lot um, around this like under CD underbelly black market sort of situation of this world where people are buying human like devil people with powers. And it's very weird. But the characters are so interesting to me. They're flawed, like to the like, like just and like darkling level. Like they're, they're they're problem like not problematic they're they're messed up and they're but they're fully admitting of that and they're very honest characters and one thing like something that happens to one of the characters kind of mimics what she herself did to other characters and she's never like this isn't fair it's kind of along the lines of well isn't this ironic <laughs> i guess i kind of brought this on myself um which i thought was interesting the mystery the twist ending was so good i did not see that coming it's gruesome, but it was unique and refreshing. And I think in a week where my main complaint was like, I've read this book before. I feel like I've said that a lot lately. Like, I've read these books before. Maybe with a different cover title and a different author, but we've read these books before, right? Sometimes they got their own unique spin on them, but sometimes they just 
do set the same stuff that so many other books do without any like peak enjoyable like characters or settings that you're like ah, this is the same book this was a very unique book okay I also don't know if it's messed up that I'm here for the romance or not I don't know if that says a lot about me or what but I just it was surprising read for me definitely I read the first chapter and was like oh okay all right oh this is what we're getting <laughs> definitely enjoyed this gave this a four out of five stars I felt like some parts were a little dense there's not a lot of dialogue in this um which is even harder to read too when you don't have an audiobook to listen along to so I'm like please stop I'm, it's trying to I'm trying to make my eyes stop skim things because that's how you read in university so you skim a lot of academic articles when there's you know 600 pages of reading to do it so my brain just skim reads when I see a lot of that without dialogue in it <laughs> so trying to stop myself from doing that was probably the hardest this part um but so some of the areas felt a little dense but i feel like it was paid off a lot and i'm really excited for the sequel and lastly this week i read nocturna by maya mutang this is again another book that exactly like the candle in the flame i've read this book before the characters in the setting are what stand it apart and the characters oh again this week was weird for me as you can probably tell already I enjoyed a lot of the romances, um, especially in this one. The romance isn't super predominant. The main character is very Selena from Throne of Glass-esque, not, I think, as violent, um, but she has a pretty similar backstory, and I think her, you know, her life up to this point, you know, it, it reminded me an awful lot of her. The magic system, I don't think, again, was necessarily unique, but it was really cool. I loved this concept. I like worlds where everyone has different powers, like, rather than, like, segregating people based on, like, instead of Hogwarts house, you know, these people are the earth people, and these people are the water people. We don't do that. Like, people just have powers at, like, random at this one. And one of the main characters has the ability to, like, shape shift, shape shift and change their face. I feel like that'd be one of the coolest powers ever. And then there's someone has, like, earth avatar kind of magic. I really like the magic and how they're used. Like, it's not just, like, people learning it in a magic school. They actually use the powers in, like, fighting. Uh, I liked the, you know, the background mythology and which ends up being the problem that needs a conflict. And I'm curious to see where book two is going to go. I think this is supposed to be three books total. I'm not totally sure how that'll go into three books. Um, but the main character, I love her. She's, she's, she's definitely got, um, she's made some pro bad choices in the past but she's like a really genuinely good person but again too we have this that she's from this lower class um impoverished her her parents are no longer aware around um and she was forced into the situations that she was forced into because of that and then we have this royal family and there's obviously going to be some animosity there and the royal family especially the 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 heir to the throne is completely unaware of what his people actually think of him and the actual problems they're facing um and it's there's a lot of back plot that that kind of slowly gets un, um unpacked in this so again not necessarily unique falls into a lot of the same traditional ya fantasies and different classes romances lots of the magic um and again too i can't name exactly which book it's kind of bugging me but i feel like the the conflict that does evolve from the magic i've read that before I, I think it's just the setting of it's not set in a, you know, in England or United States with characters with names like Elizabeth and John, okay? So it's got more diversity and having readers being able to see themselves in stories that are tried and true successes in YA. We know we all like to read them, but getting to see themselves as the character when in reality, the, the, like every book that I'm saying, like, I read this before, all the characters are white, right? They're all cis straight white people. So having a little bit of representation is not a bad thing by any means. And I ended up giving this, I think again, a three, you know, three and a half or 3.75 out of five stars. I will definitely continue this series. And also, last shout out to this cover because it's so beautiful. Oh God, it's gorgeous. I can't, if the publishers change this book cover, I'm going to light something on fire like it's just don't don't touch the cover themes okay i see you publishers i just know you're gonna do it don't touch it okay don't no stop it put the stock photo down of some girl in a stupid ball gown away hire the artist back that did this and keep this theme going okay so those are all the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below what you read this week. I'd love to know. And if you've read any of these, what you thought. If you read The Night Tiger, please let me know if I'm being crazy about my issue with that book. But like, 
I, I posted that on Let's See. Someone was like, yeah, no, the romance ruined it for me, too. And I was like, oh, thank God. It's not just me. I'm not, I'm not being crazy. It was the same way when I, like, read Dread Nation. I'm like, does no one else see the issue, issue here? There's a lot of five-star reviews from people who are like, I love diversity. And I'm like, Ehh. So I'd love to know maybe I'm missing something. Um, but yeah, that's everything. I will link all of these books in the description down below. And I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.